The town of Santiago in Guatemala is very historic for its cultural traditions and its blending of the Catholic Church with Mayan customs. Artisans are also very well known for their exceptional work on beaded jewelry, carved wooden sculptures, and textile weavings. Plus, the population still represents strong indigenous roots and lifestyles. However, it's also very well known for its tragic stories of violence during the Civil War, specifically during the 1980s and early 90s. Death threats, disappearances, and assassinations became commonplace. However, the Catholic Church served as a refuge for many families who came to sleep. On July 28, 1981, Father Stanley Rother, pastor from Oklahoma, was assassinated in his parish by the military because he was accused of aiding the rebels. His heart is buried within the church locally with the Maya, but his body was taken back to Oklahoma. Listen in to our native tour guide to give their personal account to the life of Father Stanley Rother. And this priest is a very special priest and he tried many ways how he can help the poor people. It was a group of the men, uh, he had like a, a cooperative and they used footloom to weave a cloth like you see it's inside where is his picture, they call it estole. Estole has like a Mayan cross there represents four direction of the earth. And then he, that was Stanley's idea. Then he put the corn, that's the Mayan's food, Mayan, it's their Mayan life, Mayan traditional food. <coughs> the main food for the Mayan is corn. And, and then he put the three volcanoes and the lake, we call it Mother Lake, and the sun, the, the grandfather's sun and the grandfather's sky. And, and then he put another, uh, like a, a, a cross, which is represents the embellic of the earth, or the heart of the sky, the heart of the earth. And, and then he put a, a basket, it's a local fruit, into that pattern. And what's this kind of fruit that grows around here once a year, a special fruit for here in Santiago. And then he put the Catholic Church. It's like combined with mine and Catholic. And then he put a tree, tree of life. That is what the design represents in, in that piece of cloth inside the church. And he tried many ways how he can help the poor people. Then when he hired those men as a co-op, and then they weave that material and it gets sold in the States to the Catholic people. Then when he receives the money, then he gives the money to the poor people. And either buy food or send your children to school or start a small business. That's what Stanley did. And Stanley, he was a very good friend when, with me when I was a child. Mm -hmm. And we shake hands with him. And you can see a little sculptor there, how he's shaking hands. And said hello to all the children. And a lot of the old age people, it was no government helping the poor people. And many old men and their children, they have lots of grandchildren it's hard for the old man to get some food. And Stanley has a big kitchen, a big table, when the old man and old lady, they come. And, okay, come on, eat with me. Then he eats with everybody. And that's why Stanley is really loved by people <coughs> living here. And then my mother, uh, we're five of us. And one eggs for five children. That's how poor we, we are. Not just us, but other people too. But then, with this priest's help, I'm still alive. If I didn't receive food or vitamin from him, maybe I've been dead now. And, and then because he built a hospital, he, he, do, he did construction work. And also he's a farmer. Not just any priest like sitting there reading the Bible. Well, he will read the Bible, but then he worked for the people. He has a big heart, big love to give to the people. And that's what Stanley did. And, and then when, when he died, and the, the army, they came to assassinate the priest. And when he died, all of the people here, 
uh, they were sad and crying. I was not living here, I was living in the United States when Stanley died. And, and then when he died, when I heard this priest got killed, and I was sad and crying. I don't believe it. They killed someone trying to save people's life. And what, why they killed Stanley? Because he was defending the Mayan people from the army. And what Stanley told the army, uh, what you're doing here, it's wrong. I don't think the people, they want guns here. I think what the people, what they want here, medicine, food, education, this is what's very important to Mayan life. That's what the priest is saying to the army. And who are you talking here? You're not Mayan. That's true, I'm not Mayan. You invite me to your meeting, and people that are coming and sleeping inside the church, for safety, you're scaring them. That's what the priest is saying. Then the army, they were angry with the, the priest. Then one night they came in, and this was his bedroom, then they assassinate the priest in this, into this room. And the priest, he was already dead, and they wanted to sh shot a bullet through his head. Then then the bullet then go through his head and went through the ground. This is what they put this box here. It's a bullet holes here, and the blood stained into the little window there. And you can see the dark spot there. And then, then the people uh, they wanted to give something as an to honor to Stanley in. A bunch of women they did this birds embroidery. It's made of silk, and and then one of the this is his working shirts around here, and this is one of the ceremonial scarf they did for him. It says Padre Atlas. He has his name. It's woven into that brown, and like the color brown represents the earth. The color red represents the sunrise or our blood. That's what it represents. Then the green, that's the forest. The, the blue, that's the sky. And that's what all this represents. And like the orange, that's the path of the sun. And his name is Stanley Rother. But we never called him Stanley. We called him Padre Atlas. And Padre Atlas, why did you give him that name? Because we used to have a Mayan prophet 185 years ago. His name is Atlas Sohuel. And he had a vision. He said, someday, a um, lot of the people, they're going to come here. Uh, they're going to be blonde people or dark-skinned people. Welcome here. Because uh, if they learn the language, if they feel close to our culture, they're my grandson and granddaughter. And that's what the... The, the prophet say. And then when this priest arrived here, he learned to, to heal Mayan language and he's sharing with the people and they say, oh, this is the, the grandson of the prophet. That's what they named him after a Mayan prophet, Atlas, that's his name. And he was, had many ideas. He was going to build a school for the poor children. They, then he died. So they sent us a new priest, Tom McCherry, he built the school, the Catholic school in front of the church. And then they used to call it Escuela Parroquial. That's the name of the school. And then a couple years ago, they changed the name. They call it now Colegio de Padre Atlas. That's the name of the school. They named the school after him. So the people joined and they asked for a priest and he came from Oklahoma, but he only spoke English. So before even learning Spanish, he learned Sutuvio, which is the Mayan language here. And within a couple of years, he was giving mass in Sutuvio. He would preach in Sutuvio. Entonces, cuando militar fundó la Galería en 76, 78, el presidente de Guatemala. Primero tengo que decir gracias. Okay, so he helped everyone. Ladino, Mayan, it didn't matter if anyone came to him with a need. He would, he was very generous and helped them. He would go to the states and fundraise and then come back here with the money that he fundraised to help the people of the community. Um, there was a lot of friction between the Mayan and the Ladino. He told a story about how the, the sun is here to warm everybody and keep everybody warm from, from the cold, but the Ladinos would build big homes that had uh, that would block the sun of the of the Mayan 
communities, and then the Mayans would have to go in front of the, the Ladino homes to, to get the sun, and that they would throw water at them and, and make them leave, and they treated the Mayans very poorly, and this was the first Catholic priest to actually stand up for the rights of the Mayan, because they're... In, by the law, there were no rights for, for the Mayan people. They, they were underneath the Ladinos, and so he was the first one to actually see this as an injustice and work with and alongside the Mayan people and actually help the Mayan, whereas beforehand, the Catholic Church was very much sided with the Ladinos. The main idea was that he was really the first priest to help and, and try and understand the Mayan culture. And, um, and he was saying that Maximon was the, the first god of the Mayan people here in, in Guatemala. So before the Catholic, before even the Spaniards came over, they believed and prayed to Maximon. Then the Spaniards came and they started building the Catholic churches, and even this Catholic church was, was built upon a Mayan temple. So they destroyed the Mayan temple, put the Catholic church in place. <laughs>